Back to the Bell Center and Elliot Friedman. Elliot? Well, Ron, Peter Puck mentioned there about Jerry Cheever's getting a lot of credit for putting the stitches on the mask, but it's one of Cheever's best friends, a longtime buddy of his, Doug Favell, who deserves the credit for bringing a certain kind of artistry to the game 38 years ago tonight. How did the idea of painting the mask all begin? Uh, it started on uh, 1971, October, and Halloween. <laughs> Uh, just the morning skate, uh, just the kibitzing amongst the guys. And I said to the trainer, Frank Lewis, uh, I said, Frank, maybe we should, uh, you know, tonight's Halloween, we got the orange uniforms, let's paint the mask orange like the great pumpkin. And Frank said, yeah, I can do that this afternoon. And he took the mask home, painted it orange, and I wore it that night against L.A., and uh, we won 4-1, and as uh, superstitious as goalies are, I uh, decided, okay, I better keep this mask. It's a winner. Jerry Cheevers was my buddy, and, and of course, Cheesy takes credit for having the, pay, the first design mask because he put the stitches on it. Mm -hmm. But I've seen the mask with all the stitches on it, and uh, believe me, he never got hit that much. <laughs> <laughs> so the legend I, isn't true? Yeah, they could, he wouldn't have that many hits on his body. <laughs> <laughs> The original mask is in storage at the Hockey Hall of Fame, although even if you saw it, you wouldn't recognize it. So we'll call this the Doug Favell Wall of Fame, some of the keepsakes from your career. There's the mask you had in Colorado. We'll get to this one, the Philly one, in a second. That's your backup mask from when you played in Toronto. But the unfortunate thing about this story is the mask, the original as you painted in 1971, it doesn't look like that anymore. No, it's, uh, it's actually uh, now got the leaf from my original, when I got traded in 73, Elliot, it went to, um, it went through the form of being the starburst to uh, the leaf. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they took that one because it was the original mask. You changed the design from the orange after that one year. Why was that? Well, in uh, 1972, um, we went down to the last game of the season. Uh, with the orange uh, mask, which had, had done so well all year, but we had played Buffalo in the last game of the season, and I got scored on with four seconds to go in the uh, in in the season. That put us out of the playoffs. Jerry Meehan scored on me, and uh, so being superstitious once again as a goaltender, I said that that mask can't come back next year. Things are very different since Favelle's orange burst of creativity 38 years ago. This is now big business. David Arrigo does it for a living. And check out this beautiful mask he's working on. Carey Price has commissioned it for Remembrance Day. Carey wanted to keep this mask clean here, uh, creating a lot of the iconic figures such as the, the poppies, the Canadian flag, the bagpiper, and um, of course the soldier pinning the rib and onto the uh, reef. One of the most important parts of this piece here is, of course, the poem in Flanders Field. And of course, lest we forget going across the bottom and then the French equivalent of it on the other side here. All right, so Carrie says, David, I want this mask. What's the process of putting it together? Carrie will present uh, different ideas and thoughts, what he wants to see on the mask. Uh, and then it's up to me to take those thoughts and put them down onto paper like we have here. This is just a very general and rough layout and doesn't even include the uh, bagpiper or the soldier at this point here. That is an afterthought, like then Kerry will take a look at these images which I had emailed him. Yeah. He sees them and he says, you know what, let's add in like something else. So that's where we came up with the ideas of the bagpiper as well as the soldier pinning the uh, poppy on the reef. How long does it take you to do one of these? Uh, it can vary from anywhere from between uh, two days to three days. I'd like to spend maybe about a week or two on each mask, but reality is with the NHL, they want their stuff done and they want it done right away. So two to three days is usually a, a safe bet. And then there's clear coating that will go take approximately probably about six to seven days after that. So entirely probably about nine days. And in a year, how many of these masks will you do? Uh, I have, at this point here, I'm completing anywhere between 80 to 100 masks. The most expensive one can cost a few thousand dollars, a long way from the simple coat of paint applied to Doug Favell's mask in 1971. And just one note about that mask that's being commissioned for Carey Price, Ron. Although he's going to wear it when he plays this year, he's not going to keep it. He's going to auction it off after he's done with it. And you can go to a website called woundedwarriors.ca to find out more about it. Price is going to donate the proceeds to soldiers who've been injured in combat during the war in Afghanistan.